Okay, so in this video we want to look at solving linear inequalities. So solving a linear inequality is exactly the same as solving a linear equality except for one thing. And this is where once again, if you solve, when you solve equations, you are conscious of the mathematics of what you're actually doing at every step rather than just thinking about shuffling things around, this will be easy. If you're not clear about what it is you're actually doing at every step, then you're going to find this harder, okay? And that's where, again, build, working on establishing that understanding of everything is going to enable you to make greater progress as things develop over future topics. Um, okay, so the only thing that's different is if, is if we multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, then we must reverse the inequality sign. Let's just have a think about why that happens. So let's have a think, for example, let me, I'm just going to draw up a number line. I'm just going to make it, let's make that zero there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And okay. So let's say, let's focus on two and five, for example. So we all agree that two is smaller than five. That's a true statement. Okay, so let's think about what operations we can do um, to and, in, and how we still ensure that the inequality is true. So let's think about adding, first of all, if we were to add to both sides of that inequality. For example, if we were to add two to both sides of the inequality, we would now have 3 and 7. Is it still true that 3 is less than 7? Yes. If we were to add 10 to both sides, 12 is less than 15. That's still true. If we were to add, no matter what we were to add to both sides, the inequality would still be true. Okay. What about subtraction? Well, yes. If we were to subtract, um, let's say, 5 from both sides of the inequality, we would now have negative 3 and, sorry, not negative 1, negative 3 and 0, okay? Negative 3 less than 0, is that still true? Yes. So an inequality is anything, this is greater than, okay? If it's to the right of it on a number line, it's greater than. If it's to the left of it on a number line, it's less than. It's as simple as that, okay? So, for example, negative 10 is less than negative 2. It is further to the left. It's important that you understand that about the negatives. People get jumbled around. Okay, so we can add and subtract. wouldn't matter how much we added and subtract. All we're doing is sliding the two numbers along the number line, and the one on the right is still bigger than the one on the left. So the inequalities remain true as if we add or subtract to both sides of an inequality. Okay, let's think about multiplying. If I were to... For example, multiply um, multiply both sides of the inequality by 3. So 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 3 is 15. Okay? So multiply it by 3. They don't get bigger by the same amount, but they are still both getting bigger, which means that the one on the right is still bigger than the one on the left. 6 is bigger than 15. That is still true. So we can multiply by 3. That's okay. Here we subtracted 5, that's okay. Here we added on 2, that's okay. So we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply by 3. But what about if we were to multiply by negative 3, for example? So if we were to multiply by negative 3, 2 becomes... Oh, I lost my 0, hold on. Excuse me, uh, there's 0 there. If we were to multiply by negative 3, 2 becomes negative 6. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 there, times negative 3. If we were to multiply by negative 3, 5 becomes negative 15. And all of a sudden, if we multiply both sides by a negative, 2 becomes negative 6, 5 becomes negative 15, and now, sorry, I wrote that inequality the wrong way around. My apologies in the last one. And now, keeping the inequality sign the same way is no longer true. Negative 6 is not smaller than negative 15. 
So if we've multiplied by a negative, we have to reverse the sign. And that's because what happens is the number on the right, when you multiply by a negative, ends up being the number on the left. So it ends up actually being the smaller thing. When you mirror it, essentially if you're multiplying by a negative, you're reflecting in the line and you're reflecting in zero. And so the thing that was further to the right ends up being further to the left. So you have to mul um, reverse the inequality when you multiply by a negative. Dividing by a negative is also multiplying by a negative. If you're dividing by negative two, it's the same as multiplying by negative a half. It's the same idea. Okay, so multiplying or dividing by a negative, you must reverse the inequality. Again, it comes down to you being able to think about what am I doing to both sides of the inequality? And if it's anything other than multiplying or dividing by a negative, nothing needs to change. Um, just recalling how we represent inequalities. So the smaller end points to the smaller thing. So in this statement, x is less than 2. The smaller thing in that relationship is x. Okay. If it, even if it was written this way around, it's still the same statement. x is the smaller thing. Okay. 2 is bigger than x, or x is smaller than 2. Okay. They, both of these things are the same. So that's where people get um, bogged down in, is it a greater than or a less than sign? Okay, yes, there are, we can talk about, you know, a less than sign versus a greater than sign. But it's not, that's not what's so important so much as the smaller end of the sign points to the smaller thing. And the bigger end of the sign points to the bigger thing. Okay. So as I said, here we use a less than sign, here we use a greater than sign, but we're still representing the same information. X is less than 2 is the same as 2 is greater than X. Okay. Um, less than or equal to, X is less than or equal to 2. So, oh, sorry, let me go back to the number line here. So if X can be less than 2, it can't be 2, which is why we have a hollow circle here, but it can be anything less than 2. Some people get confused about the fact that, oh, if x is less than 2, that's the same as x being greater than or equal to negative 1. But it isn't. What about all of these values in here? If x is less than 2, then x can be 1.9. x can be 1.99999. x can be 1.5. x can be, you know, 1 and a third. Okay, so it's not, it's not just about integers. x can be any value right up to 2, but not including 2. Okay. X is less than or equal to 3 means that X can actually equal 3. So the distinction when we're representing on a number line is you have a closed circle at 3. Okay. And then X can be anything before that. X is greater than 0. So hollow circle at 0, anything above that. X is greater than or equal to negative 2. Closed circle at negative 2, anything above that. Okay, solve each of the following inequalities for x and graph the solution set on a number line. Okay, so 4x is less than or equal to 12. We're focusing on getting x on its own. That's going to require us to divide both sides by 4. We're not dividing by negatives. So we don't need to reverse the inequality. So x is less than or equal to 12 divided by 4, which is 3. On a number line, I always mark 0 just to give me a point of reference. There's 3x can equal 3 and anything below there. So this is your x-axis, this is your number line, okay, and then you're representing the inequality above there. All right, if negative x on 3 is greater than 1, okay, now negative x on 3 is the same as negative x on positive 3, and it's the same as x on negative 3. This is going to be a quicker solution process if we think about it as being x on negative 3. So x on negative 3 is greater than 1. We're multiplying both sides by negative 3 to get x on its own. We're multiplying by a negative, so we reverse the inequality. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Okay. So we multiply both sides by negative 3, which means we reverse the inequality. And 1 times negative 3. Yeah. This side times negative 3 just cancels out the negative 3, leaves us with x. The right-hand side times negative 3 gives us negative 3. x is less than negative 3. Number line, let's put 0 there. 1, 2, 3. Negative 3 is there. Doesn't include negative 3, but it includes all values below there. All right, 2x minus 3 equals, uh, sorry, is less than 4x plus 3. Just focus on solving it like you would an equation. We want to collect the like terms. 
I'm going to take away 2x to avoid having negative x term and that's also going to help you avoid having to flip the inequality too much. So we've got negative 3 left on the left hand side, 2x on the right hand side plus 3. I'm going to take away 3 from both sides so that's not dividing by a negative, that's subtracting 3, that's fine. That gives us negative 6 is less than 2x. I'm going to divide both sides by positive 2. So negative 6 divided by positive 2 is negative 3. 2x divided by positive 2 is x. We divide it by positive 2, so no need to reverse the inequality. Okay, at this point, personally, I don't accept this as a completed answer to solving the inequality. Again, because you're not answering the question. The question says, essentially asks you to describe x, or to find the set of values of x, and instead of saying x is greater than this, or x is less than this, or x is bigger than or greater than or equal to this, or x is less than or equal to this, your solution says that negative 3 is less than x. And you're answering the question in an obtuse way. Instead of telling me about x, you're telling me about negative 3. Okay? So you should always express your final answer with x on the left-hand side. Now, I want to be clear here. I'm not doing anything to both sides of this inequality. I am simply writing it the other way around. Up here, the bigger end points to the x. So the bigger end still needs to point to the x here. Okay, I'm still going to have x and negative 3 because I want to write it with the x on the left. I'm not reversing the inequality here. Okay, I'm not changing the statement. It still says the same thing. The bigger end is still pointing to the x. Negative 3 less than x is the same information as x is bigger than negative 3. But by writing this, I'm actually answering the question I'm being asked, which is about x. Tell me about what x can be. x can be bigger, anything that is bigger than negative 3. Okay? So be clear about that. I expect you to make that transition yourself because in my experience lots of students get that step wrong and so it's not up to me as the person marking your work to be able to make that leap for you you need to be able to do it okay all right example four here um, again we've got brackets and things solve it the same way you would an equation except if you're multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative so let's expand out the brackets first 6x minus 14 negative 5 times 2x, so minus 10x, negative 5 times 3 minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. Let's collect like terms on the left hand side, so 6x minus 10x is negative 4x, negative 14 minus 15 is negative 29 and that is less than or equal to 0. Let's add 29 to both sides, so we haven't multiplied or divided by a negative, sorry 29, and now we want to divide both sides by negative 4, which means we're going to get 20, sorry, 29 on negative 4. And we've divided by negative 4, so we need to reverse the inequality. Okay. Um, so x is bigger than or equal to negative 29 on 4. That's a fraction in simplest form. Yes, by all means, you can write it as 7 and a quarter or 7.25, but there's no need to do that. Okay, final example here, a worded problem. Mario has obtained marks of 88, 94, 92 and 98 on maths tests so far this year. So he's good at maths. If he must maintain an average of 80 or above, what scores could he obtain on the last test? Now I'm not asking you to give me an example of one or two scores he could get. I'm asking you to give me the full set of possible answers, that possible marks he could get. Okay. Now, obviously, he only needs an average of 80, and so far he's scored well above 80 all the time. So he's going to have a pretty low benchmark for the final test. Um, so we should predict that and be able to think about that when we get our final answer. Does my answer make sense? Yes, it does, given what I thought about at the beginning. Okay, let's think about when we average. So let's let x um, be the mark on the last test, mark, mark needed on the last test. Okay, so we know after he completes five tests, he needs an average of 80. So when we add together the next test result with each of the last test results, and that is five tests, so to average them, we divide them by five. We need that to be 80 or above. We need that to be greater than or equal to 80. So we want to solve this. 
So let's do x equals, I'm just quickly going to get my CAS to help me with the 88 plus 94 plus 92 plus 98. If you're doing that in your head, a quicker way to do it might be to think about you've got four numbers that are close to four to 100, sorry. So they'll add up to 400 and then just take off two less, eight less, six less and 12 less. So take off, you know, two plus eight plus six plus 12. All right. Anyway, it's x plus 372 divided by 5 has to be greater than or equal to 80. Let's multiply both sides of the inequality by 5. So we don't need to reverse the sign when we multiply by positive 5. So x plus 372 has to be bigger than or equal to 400. And so therefore x has to be bigger than or equal to 400 minus 372 is... Um, is 28. So as long as he gets 28 or more on the last test, his average will be 80 or above. So what scores could he obtain on the last test? Therefore, he must obtain a score of 28 or more. Okay, again, be careful about your interpretation of that. If it was x is bigger than 28, it would be he must obtain a score greater than 28. Okay. Now, again, I know that's a question that many of you can do by shuffling numbers around in your head, but I want you to be clear about the fact that actually the math you do in your head is the same as what you've done in the equation. Okay, You've added up all the scores, you've done 80 times 5, and you've subtracted um, that from 80 times 5. Okay. The algebra is no different. It's just doing, it's still doing the the work that you're thinking through in your mind. Again, I want to be able to see that you can construct an equation or an inequality though. Okay, solving inequalities is the same as solving equalities. Okay, so menu 3, 1 for solving, whether it's an equation, whether it's a literal equation, whether it's an inequality. Um, so if we want to solve, you know, 7x minus 5 is, now inequality symbols, control equals, brings up this little palette. Okay, so let's say it's less than or equal to 3 minus 4x. You want to solve 4x and it will do that for us. Okay, exercise 1e for the work today.